y'all. Welcome to another wonderful Wednesday. This is Jen from Dreary Dreary Huntsville today. Um, and so I was thinking about maybe just making a card that had a little bit of an old technique to it. Um, and I was pulling out my painter's tape and I remembered about the painter's tape transfer. So that's what I'm going to do today. So we've got our just our plain old blue painter's tape. I'm going to use uh, Lovely as a Tree, Tempting Turquoise, Knight of Navy, and Basic Gray are my inks. Um, I'll use some black stays on for the tree and some Versamark and embossing powder and stuff. But it's going to be fun, so let's get started. I have a white, whisper white piece cut just as a, in a quarter sheet. So I'm just going to tape it down so that I can get it just stable so when I make a mess of this ink, will be so much fun. And you're just going to take your ink and basically thump your tape through your ink pad. You want a piece of tape that's a little bit longer than the piece of paper that you're working with. And I'll probably use three pieces of tape just because I'm lazy and I don't want to reuse the same piece of tape. But you want to take your tape with the sticky side down and stick it into your stamp pad. Now I have this, this little spot here on the Tempting Turquoise because my shipment's not here yet on my big one. So we're just going to make do with what we've got. So just kind of, let me move it over so y'all can see. Just kind of stick it down in there and thump it down. Um, and just transfer the ink. You won't be able to see it on this color, but on the next color I'll show you. And then it likes to get away from you. You kind of have to make sure that it, you follow it. <laughs> Just take it and transfer it. So you can't see any ink on there, but it's there, I promise. And then just ink up. Make sure you get it the whole length of the paper. And I'm going to trim this down, so I'm not really worried about getting it precise. But I do want to make sure it's straight. So I'm going to use the grid lines on my mat to make sure that it's straight. And oh, well, hello, Franks. And we're going to stick that down. And I'm going to go Tempting Turquoise, um, Basic Gray, and then um, Night of Navy. And the Basic Gray is a little bit easier since it is a bigger pad. You can just kind of stick it in there and then move your fingers across it. And then pick it up. And you can see it's, it's on there now. And go like this. Do it again. Um... It doesn't have to be perfect, because actually the worse that it looks, the better that it looks on the paper. <laughs> kind of like my life, right? The worse that it is, the better that it is. And then I'm just going to leave a tiny little white border right there. And stick that down and transfer that ink there. And I'm going to leave all these down. And that's my gray. And then I'm going to go with my Knight of Navy. Same deal. Pull off a piece of tape. I need to get my husband to give me some more tape. Um, babe, I used up all the tape. No, I wasn't painting. I was crafting. <laughs> That's okay. That's what we're supposed to do, right? Okay. And with this, um, Knight of Navy, I noticed last time I was doing it, if you don't change direction of the ink pad, you're going to get lines in it. And I can't like lines, so I'm going to change the direction. Kind of go this a little bit stick my thumb in some of them because this is actually going to be my ground um, so I want it to have a little bit more texture and you can't see anything I'm doing I'm sorry I'm changing the direction kind of going this way and that way and sideways and front ways and then see it's a big old mess right watch how cool this is going to be so neat and then I'm going to just eyeball it and kind of try and give the same amount of distance as the first and second tapes and then just press that down real good. I'm going to move my ink pads because I'm levels to get ink everywhere. Okay. And then when you pull up your painter's tape, pull it up kind of at an angle like this because if you don't, it will tear your paper. So there is our Tempting Turquoise. That's our sky. And it's a little lighter than our first one, but they're all going to be just fine. And then here's our gray. Oh, see, look, I tore the paper. <laughs> Isn't that good that we're going to cut it down? Okay. And then next is our blue. And it doesn't have to sit because these are dye inks, so they're going to go into the paper right away. And if you're using a craft ink, you probably will have to make it sit for a little bit longer. But, okay. And that's our navy. 
So our piece looks like crap right now, doesn't it? Yay for us! But it's okay, because we are going to cut it down. But while I have it taped down, I'm going to go ahead and get my stays on and my um, Lovely as a Tree. That's what I'm using today, Lovely as a Tree. I love this set. It's like 412 years old, but it um, still works. It's still great. I think that it works for everything. I was looking for a boy birthday card because I work with like 413,000 boys and like, I don't know, six girls or something. So I'm needing all these boy cards lately. So, okay, basically what I'm going to do is just kind of line it up here in the middle. And this used to be a wood-mounted stamp, but I can't like the wood-mounted ones. So I took them off and um, used that tack it over and over. And then it transfers to a clear mount. And since I've had this stamp for 412 years, yay, ta-da! Let me bring you in so you can see it real good. Ta-da, look how pretty! Okay, um, that actually was a wood stamp, and you can, if you have any wood stamps, the old wood stamps, like from back in the day, you stick them in the microwave for a few seconds, it'll heat up the adhesive, and then you can peel the rubber off, and it won't damage the stamp, and then just coat it with, um, actually I think I have it here, hold on, with some, yeah, here I do, tack it over and over, and apply a thin coat, let it dry, and then it turns it into a removable stamp, so that's fun too. Um, so if someone's giving you like some wood stamps that you just need to turn into clear mount stamps, you can do it that way. Of course you can always buy them clear mount now, but back then you couldn't. And this stamp is as old as I am, but it's still current. How fun is that? Okay, so now I'm taking up the painter's tape on this guy here. And I'm going to quickly clean this up because I will have ink everywhere if I don't. My baby wipe is dry, but that's okay. Okay. And then I'm going to trim this down to four and a half by three and a quarter. So your final piece here is going to be four and a half by three and a quarter on your, on your um, lovely as a tree piece. And I'm going to take most of the white off. So three and a, this, this is going to be three and a quarter wide. So I'm going to take most of this white off here. Flip it and take most of the white off here. And this, I hate this stamp trimmer, but my new one's not here yet either. So I have to just work with what I have, right? What do we got here? That's three and a half, so we need to take it down even smaller. That's going to be three and a quarter. Okay, three and a quarter, and I don't like that. My OCD says I can't have any of that white right there. Okay, and then four and a half, so let's take... Four and a half is going to pick me there, so let's take that off of there. And four and a half will pick me there. Yeah, that's going to work out real well. Okay. Yay! Look how pretty. And that's the longest part of our mess. And then what we'll do next is we will mount this piece to a piece of Tempting Turquoise. That is four and three quarters by three and a half. So it's four and three quarters by three and a half. So we'll just flip this over and add some adhesive and we'll mount that. And I'm just eyeballing. I don't really measure a whole lot of stuff usually. And then this one is going to go on a piece of Knight of Navy that is four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to mount it a little bit higher. And actually, I think that Tempting Turquoise is a little too big for my liking. So I'm going to trim it down this way. I think it's too big. Just by a skosh. A skosh. <laughs> I like that word, skosh. It's more than a little bit, but less than a lot. It's a skosh. Okay. 
I'm going to sit this here. Yeah, that's the way I want it. Because I want a little bit of a border here because I'm going to throw some pearls down there. I know it's a boy card, but it needed a little something. So, All right. Now we're going to mount this Tempting Turquoise on this Knight of Navy. And this Knight of Navy is five and a quarter by four. And we will stick this down real quick. Hello. There we go. And then I have three of these little pearls here. And I'm just going to stick them in the lower left hand corner. Well, come on in, Franks. Well, hello. Come on. And then what happened? Really? My Lanta. I know it. He's a bit of a diva. He has to be part of everything. And then, actually, let me come bring you in so you can see a little bit better. I'm just taking these with my scissors and um, taking them off the package with my scissors, and then I'm going to stick them down to the to the paper. I find it makes it the easiest for me. And then I can kind of line it up and get it somewhat fixed there in the center. So there, yeah. And then I will flip this, and I'm going to attach this to a Whisper White Heavyweight card base. It's just a standard card base, uh, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And I'll flip this over and stick it to the front. And then I'm going to use the Happy Birthday from the um, Teeny Tiny Wishes. And I'm going to emboss that. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm so good at this. <laughs> okay. Here we go. And then I'll have just a little scrap of... I'm going to set this over here for now. And I have a little scrap of Knight of Navy. And I'm going to emboss the Teeny Tiny Wishes on there. And I need to get my embossing buddy... An embossing buddy is just a bag filled with powder that gets all the static and the oils and everything off of the cardstock for when you emboss because it will get embossing powder everywhere. And if you've never used an embossing bunny and you've ever embossed anything and you have all those little pieces of embossing powder and stuff everywhere, you'll understand. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of line this up. Doesn't really have to be straight because I'm going to cut it out, but I am going to leave enough room for a little flag tail there at the end. And happy birthday! And then I just store my embossing powder in a Tupperware container because I find that those little containers don't hold up to my <laughs> clumsiness. So I just have a plastic spoon in there and I sprinkle it on there and kind of tap it off. And look, I got stuff on there anyway. Look at that schmutz. Hmm. Okay, flip it over, and if you find, like I did, I got a bunch of schmutz on there that I didn't want, you can get a paintbrush and just kind of flick it off. There we go. That was a hair. I bet you that was Frankie's. <laughs> he likes to craft with me, but he doesn't like to take his fur with him when he goes. So he sometimes leaves it. Okay. And then we'll emboss this real quick. And you know the embossing powder is done when it turns a glossy color. It's kind of plasticky. It doesn't take very long. Just a few seconds. And don't heat it too long because you'll burn it. And then it'll be brown instead of white. And that's not good. There we go. Can you see it change color? Yeah, you can see that pretty good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, and then I'll move this out of the way. Have you ever blown your embossing powder with your embossing gun and had it go everywhere? <laughs> if you haven't, then forget that I said that, because I've never had that happen either. Okay, and then I'm just going to take this and cut it out to be a small flag. Or a small rectangle, actually. I'll flag it here in just a minute. 
Let's go this way with it. It'd probably be easier. I really hope my Stampin' Up! trimmer comes in soon, because... Okay, that's good enough. And then I will get my little small scissors here. My little detail scissors. And those are really crooked. Don't tell anyone. Maybe the person that's going to get this card will be blind. Then I won't have to worry if it's not straight. Okay, so this one... When I make my flag ends, I just cut right up in the center, and then I go from the, each end to the center, and that makes it so that it's even. I don't know if you can see that. I go up into the center there. Even really is, I guess, a moot point at this stage. But uh, there's our little happy birthday. And then I will just adhere that kind of down here in the side. And stick that down with some adhesive. And we're just about through. It's debating on like some some type of glitter or something. No, it's for a boy. Boys don't like glitter. Plus, glitter gets everywhere. Okay, well, I guess that's the card. We're finished. Uh, if you have done the painter's tape technique and forgotten about it, pull it back out because it's lots of fun. And each different pad gives you different textures. You can see that the first one, the Tempting Turquoise, gives you somewhat of a liney texture um, and then the the archival ink gives you more of a, of a solid coverage and then depending on how you do your stamp and and pull everything uh, it it can be can be quite a textured event um, thank you for sticking around and I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that it inspired you to pull out a technique that you haven't done in a while We'll see you soon and have a wonderful Wednesday. Bye.